Trinidad gave me 18 years of education. So I'm glad to be back home. How many of you remember a teacher who had a big impact on your life? We all have one, right? That's my teacher, Ms. Passad. She taught me math in my high school in Trinidad, Queens Royal College. In that picture, she's probably trying to explain to us how to solve some math problem that has us all stuck. What I liked about Ms. Passad was that she wouldn't stop teaching until everyone got it. She'd explain it one way, how to solve the problem, half the class would get it. But for the other half, she'd keep going. She'd try a different explanation that would help some people. But if I still didn't understand it, she'd give me a personalized explanation to fill that gap in my mind. Because Ms. Passad made sure I always understood math. I got an enjoyment and a confidence in math that's carried me through to my computer science research today. Unfortunately, most students don't have access to a teacher like Ms. Passad. When they're struggling with math like we were, there's no one there to help them get it. Instead of learning to solve problems, they're learning that they're not good at math, that they're not cut out for school. At this very moment, thousands of students are failing out of school and having doors closed in their future. As a scientist who investigates learning and technology, here's what I wonder. Could we use the internet to bottle up Ms. Prasad's teaching and give it out to the world's students. Right now, the internet's provided incredible access to education. If you go right now and type into Google edX, here's what you'll see. These are hundreds of free university courses that millions of people are signing up for. We call them Massive Open Online Courses, or MOOC. A strange term. We didn't have this in high school. I remember when I was doing my homework, if I got stuck, it was just me and the pen and paper. I'd have loved to be able to call Ms. Fassad and ask for help. But she deserves a break, right? <laughs> no human teacher can be available 24-7. But now, if I look at my cousins in high school in Trinidad, they can do their math homework online. The first one is Morgan. He could go to a six months to edX to Khan Academy. And when he gets stuck, he could type his answer in and get told if it's right or wrong. If he still can't get it, he could see a solution of how to solve the problem. And that's just not available to Morgan. That's available to anyone with an internet connection. My cousins in Boston, other people's cousins on any continent. Whether you're in the tropics of Trinidad like Morgan, or the snow of the US like my other cousins, you're still learning math. In the last 10 years, online education has provided tremendous access. But in the next 10 years, the future of online education needs to bring to the world the high-quality, personalized teaching that Ms. Passad brought to me. I'm trying to solve this problem in my research by bringing together computer science, psychology, and education. It's extremely difficult to get technology to do what Ms. Passad did so easily. Fortunately, many other scientists are working on this. One example of what I've been doing has been actually trying to improve math problems. So I collaborated with Khan Academy to take their online math problems, like that one, and redesign it so we'd add questions asking students to explain while they were solving the problem. The same way Ms. Passad used to ask me to explain 
when I was trying to solve a problem. What's amazing to me is that I could use online education to advance the science of how people learn, as well as help my cousin Morgan. When we launched our study two years ago, he could have gone on Khan Academy, clicked on the problem, and been a participant in my study. What I do could actually help him in school. I'm part of a new group called Harvard VPA Research, where what we do is collect data from online courses and lessons and use this to understand the science of how people learn and also to actually help students in the moment. But I've realized right now, as good as I make it, I'm still providing the same lesson and problem to students across the world in any country. But those students are different in so many ways, in their knowledge, in their attitude. When Ms. Bassard taught us, she would teach us differently. She'd personalize her explanations to where we were at, making sure that we all reached learning. That was in a tiny class in Trinidad. Across the world, the differences are even bigger. So in the last year, I've developed a method for automatically personalizing online lessons. Building on the great work by other scientists. So the assessments math platform asks us to apply this to one of their problems. So I looked at the problem, like one student solve every day, and I looked at the explanations of how to solve it the students got when they were stuck. And I redesigned this so that any teacher across the world could just suggest an alternative explanation. So we start collecting these different explanations from many different teachers. And now, if Morgan goes online and tries to solve his problem, and he asks for an explanation, he can get one of many different ones. And the system collects data about Morgan's learning profile. Which problems did he get right and wrong before? So the same way Ms. Passad would try to tailor the explanation she gave us to where we were at, this kind of system could actually give Morgan explanations based on his knowledge. But the system doesn't assume that it knows from the beginning what to do. Those kinds of systems are incredibly hard to build. What it does is it learns from experience. If it gives Morgan an explanation, it then checks, did he actually learn? Did he solve the next problem right? The same way Ms. Passad would check if we understood what she'd said. So if he doesn't get it, the system can give him a different explanation. And when it next gets a future student, if they're similar to Morgan, the system can use what worked for Morgan for them. And if they're different, the system can match what worked for another student to them. So this kind of approach is starting to push towards the kind of personalized individual instruction that Ms. Passard gave us. It's learning how to automatically personalize. This is just one example with math problems. If you wanted to take an online lesson and use this approach, we'd be happy to show you how. We call our, anytime we use our method to redesign a piece of an online lesson, so that they can do this kind of automatic personalization, we call that a MOOClet. It's kind of based on the MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses, but we're actually breaking it down to take components of MOOCs and make them these intelligent systems. And we can apply it to any lesson or any website. It doesn't actually have to be an online course. If you're interested in the science behind this, there's more information on my website. So I want to go back to the beginning. Could online education ever replace Ms. Passard? No. <laughs> Technology can't replace our best teachers. But imagine if we can make personalized online lessons halfway as good as how Ms. Passard taught me and your best teachers taught you. 
millions of students will go from failing to succeeding in school and their life. I hope we can give all students what Ms. Passard gave me. Now, you're probably, hopefully, going to applaud. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Ms. Passard, I wanted Ms. Passard to be here, but she's not in Trinidad today. But she told me she'd make sure to watch it online. So I'd like you now to give a round of applause to Ms. Passard for inspiring all this. <laughs>